الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين الكريم Before I begin discussing the necessary subject of the citing of the crescent and establishing the new month, may we all sincerely from our hearts recite salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم ومنبع العلم والحلم والحكم وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم I am here uh, for sharing the knowledge of the sharia that we have received from Rasulullah صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the Fuqahai Kiram of the Ummah with you people. I was uh, supposed to talk about this uh, yesterday um, to the team of the Sunni way and the young, the youth that are attached to the religion and they are thirsty for knowledge and unfortunately I didn't have the time yesterday so here I am and I am here live today and I will also answer your questions and some questions have already come through so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam he has taught us how to sight the moon and how to establish the new moon through his own actions and I mentioned a verse on the Quran so what I'm doing now is I will give you a brief introduction of the way uh, the moon is cited and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a criteria and prescribed how we begin the new month and then inshallah uh, briefly mention a few uh, relative things to us today uh, around the world because I have received requests from people in Malawi and other places as well who have been telling me to speak on this topic. Uh, so briefly I will give you an introduction and then inshallah we shall uh, look at some of the questions that we have received and if somebody has any more questions then they are more, more than uh, free to just make a comment. It is all before me so your comments are before me. Um, so first of all uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an that the month of Ramadan is in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani the Qur'an was sent down, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Qur'an down. Hudal lin nasi wa bayyinatim min al-huda wal furqan. It is a guidance for the people and there is uh, clear signs from guidance and, uh, dis and, and distinguishing between the truth and false in the Qur'an. And then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ So whosoever from amongst you witnessed the month, then he shall fast, yani he must fast. So this is a prescription from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are not free to choose when you wish to uh, do your obligatory fasts of uh, the month. You, you cannot choose that I will do them in uh, Muharram or I will do them in Safar or I will do them in the winter when the, doors, day, when the days are very short. It will be a very short fast. In fact, no, you will have to fast when you witness Man Shahida Min Shahra when you witness the month of Ramadan. Yani, uh, you have to be a Shahid of the month of Ramadan for you to fulfill the obligatory uh, pillar of Islam of fasting. 
in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in Bukhari, Muslim and all other books of the uh, Siha Sitta or most of them, this narration is very uh, famous. It is narrated by many of the Sahaba Kiram and one of them is Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and, and, and they have uh, narrated these, these narrations with, with different wording but they mean the same thing. Uh, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala's narration in Bukhari Sharif is that he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said La tasumu hatta tarawul hilala Do not fast until you see the crescent. Hilal is the new moon. Until you have seen the crescent, don't fast. Then you do not begin the month of Ramadan until you have actually seen the hilal. Wala tuftiru hatta tarawuhu and then do not do iftar. Do not do iftar, yani don't celebrate Eid. Iftar is to break the fast, yani to stop fasting. And here, wala tuftiru means do not begin the month of Shawwal and don't celebrate Eid. Hatta tarawhu until you have seen it. So you do not fast until you've seen the moon. You see the moon in the night, you fast in the morning. And that's the beginning of the month of Ramadan. And then until you don't see the hilal again, the new moon again, after that month has passed, until you don't see the new moon, you do not stop fasting and celebrate Eid. And then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam mentioned a sentence which is very important uh, for today's topic. And it's important that you take a mental note, or if you're writing, then take, write this down, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa then specifically said, فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَقْدِرُوا لَهُ That if the moon has been hidden from you. If the moon has been hidden from you, and that could be due to clouds, because it's too cloudy and the moon is there but it has been hidden, or due to the pollution in the air and the moon being very thin, and or, yani, the light of the sun that's reflecting off it is not, is not as bright but it's dim, uh, or due to pollution or any artificial lighting or any other reason that the moon has become hidden from you fa in ghumma alaykum yani ghumma al hilalu alaykum if the moon has been hidden from you faqdiru lahu then uh, complete the number faqdiru then count the complete numbers of 30 faqdiru lahu wa fi riwayatin and in one narration he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ash shahru tis'u wa ishruna layla the month is 29 nights. فَلَا تَصُومُوا حَتَّى تَرَوْهُ Therefore do not fast until you have seen it. Yani Sha'ban will be 29 nights. After the 29 days have finished and the 29 nights have finished, you will sight the moon on the 30th night, which will be after 29 days. On the 30th night after Maghrib, Yani, after the 29 days of Sha'ban have been finished, you will go out and you will look for the moon. And this is wajib. For, for the month of Sha'ban, it is wajib kifaya. Yani, those people who don't go out, then they are sinful if nobody else in the community is going out to seek the moon. So it is wajib upon us to cite the moon for Sha'ban, for Ramzan, for Shawwal, for Dhil Qa'da and for Dhil Hijjah. These five months, it is wajib kifaya. Yani, it, in the community, a group of people must take this on upon themselves. If nobody does, then everyone is sinful. They are all sinful. So the Messenger of Allah is saying that the month is 29 nights, after which, yani on the 30th night, you will go out, فَلَا تَصُومُوا حَتَّى تَرَوْهُ And do not start the fasting, yani do not start the month of Ramadan until you have seen it. فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ However, if the moon has been hidden from you, فَأَكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ ثَلَاثِينَ Then complete the number of 30 nights. So you will complete that 30th night as Sha'ban, then the 30th day of Sha'ban, and then you start the new month by default. So if you finish 30 days of a month, then by default the next month begins. Many people tend to uh, uh, raise this question that how can we uh, follow moon sighting because in the UK, it is very cloudy and it's difficult to see how, by the way, that is completely wrong because our experience tells us that we generally see the moon for, for six months. We see it on the 29th day. But some people, due to their uh, lack of knowledge, they say that how can we follow moon sighting of UK when if 
we can't see the moon due to the due to it being cloudy we would end up having 31 32 33 days of of the month that is completely uh, uh, an expression of how ignorant people are unfortunately because the, by default once you have completed 30 days of a month the next month begins so that's the maximum days uh, you can have in a month you don't need to sight the moon in order to start the next month after you have finished 30 days the only time you can uh, you will change the month when you have seen the moon is if you see it after 29 days have passed and that's from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. In another narration from Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala and in Bukhari Sharif as well, he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, Sumu li ru'yatihi, fast by seeing it. And, and the difference here with namaz, because many people tend to uh, do qiyas of fasting with, with salah. And in namaz, the, the Quran has told us and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam have, have clearly, the Quran is clear, and so is the hadith on the timing of salah. It clearly says when the sun has set, you perform your maghrib salah. When the sun has set, you can break your fast. It does not say that when you see, the word see is important here. When you see the sun has set, then perform your maghrib salah. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't say that. The Quran didn't say that. When you see the break of dawn, then pray your fajr salah. When you see that the, the sun has uh, moved from the zenith at midday, yani from its highest point it has moved and it's tilted and it's inclined towards setting now, then pray. If you see that, then pray your zahr salah. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa did not say that. Why? Because the ulama i kiram, yani the ulama i kiram say why? Because, because Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam left the timings of salah based upon knowledge. Knowledge of sunset is enough for you to start your Maghrib Salah and break your fast. Knowledge of the break of dawn is enough. Not sighting. Knowledge and sighting are two different things. Seeing something yourself and having the knowledge of its existence are two different things. So in Salah times, the Messenger of Allah clearly said that when the sun has set, yani when you have received the knowledge and you have got certainty that the sun has been set now has set now then you can start your uh, maghrib salah you can uh, break your fast however when it came to beginning the new month or starting the new month or ending the the the, the current month he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam did not say that when the when the moon is born start the new month he did not say that neither did the quran in fact, Allah and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, have taught us that sumu li ru'yatihi, you must fast by seeing it. Yani the knowledge, it's not based on the knowledge of the birth of the moon or the crescent. It is in fact based on the sighting of the moon and the crescent. That's the difference between namaz and fasting, as in the, as in the changing of the months. This is the difference when, when, when they mentioned qul, uh, when, when they said, Yes, Aluna Kaanil Ahilla in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply said, Qul hiya nas. They are the, they are timings for the people. So the timings will vary from 29 to 30 days. It will change. And it will all be based on your sighting, not knowledge. It's not based on knowledge. We can have knowledge that the, 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 the moon is present. However, the Prophet Muhammad rejected the acceptance of that by that sentence that I mentioned that you should take a mental note of it or write it down. That additional sentence he mentioned which was فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَقْدِرُوا لَهُ If it has been hidden from you by the clouds or pollution or anything of the sort, then finish 30 days. And that sentence, the fuqaha kiram say that this sentence clearly tells us that this scientific knowledge or calculation is not acceptable for the changing of the months and for the timings of, of Hajj and uh, fasting Ramadan and for the uh, other, other aspects of uh, the Sharia that, uh, that require time uh, based on the moon. So for, for him sallallahu ta'ala alayhi to tell us that if it has been hidden, if the crescent has been hidden, then we through science, we can see it. It's not hidden from us. Science tells us it's there. You can use a, uh, a special telescope which will tear through, yani it will allow your sight to tear through the clouds and see 
the moon that it is there however we can't see it without these uh, artificial machines which which use artificial uh, lights and uh, in order to look through the clouds so having that knowledge we have the knowledge that the moon is there it's behind the clouds unfortunately it's cloudy here in our city we can't see it so ya rasulullah can we accept that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no fa in ghumma alaykum fa akmilu al-iddata thalathina if it has been hidden from you and you can't see it although you may have the knowledge of it that it is there through astronomy or through uh, other calculations then the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no it is not based on knowledge it is based on ru'ya and ru'ya means to to see to sight so that clearly tells us that in islam the sighting of the of the moon is uh, sighting of the moon is based on uh, is based on sighting and seeing with the eye with the naked eye and not based on the knowledge of the birth of the moon and even then in order to emphasize this matter the messenger of allah sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam has also in uh, bukhari sharif and muslim sharif yani these are absolutely uh, rigorously authentic narrations I, i am mentioning these are not weak narrations that i am uh, uh, reciting to you he sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam in uh, Bukhari Sharif and uh, in Muslim Sharif in in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad radiyallahu ta'ala an in Imam Imam Nasai has recorded it Imam, uh, Imam Abu Daud has recorded this narration Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala an said and and these are the words of uh, Muslim Sharif he he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said inna ummatun ummiya indeed we are an an uh, illiterate nation we are an umma ummiya an illiterate narration uh, um nation we are an illiterate nar- nation how can that be when our quran when it was sent down to us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first revelation was iqra which was to read and you know to read which is to do with education and uh, the 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 surah surah uh, qalam wal qalami wa ma yasturun It, it's a whole cha- surah a whole chapter in the quran emphasizing on on writing so literacy and writing and reading it is emphasized throughout the quran and throughout the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam we we are aware that he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam encouraged uh, literacy so much that he would free uh, captives after war uh, if they taught someone how to read and write So we are not an illit- illiterate nation at all the muslims are highly educated and the, the history of islam tells us because the west learned their civilization and and many of the sciences they have today they learned them from the from the muslim world so the muslims are not a not an illiterate nation so what ya rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam do you mean by calling us an illiterate nation he said inna ummatun ummiya la naktubu wa la nahsab wa la nahsubu we are an illiterate nation we do not write and we do not calculate and then he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam said ashahr hakadha wa hakadha wa aqada al-ibham fi thalathati wa aqada al-ibham fi thalathati to what is, what does he mean he means that we are an illiterate nation when it comes to the matter of the months and the sighting of the moon ashahr ashahru hakadha wa hakadha he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam said and i'm explaining what this illiteracy means for the ummah he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam spread out his fingers both his hands and he spread them out so you could see 10 fingers and he said the month is like this and he spread out his 10 thing- fingers and then he closed them and then he opened them again and then he closed them and then he opened them and he folded one of his thumbs Okay so he showed all 10 fingers once and then he showed them them again and then the third time he closed the thumb which gives you 29 so what he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam is saying is that in terms of the sighting of the moon and changing the month we are uh, we will not follow literacy we will not follow science that's what he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam is teaching us he is saying that we will not calculate we will not use mathematics although he has clearly told us that there are 29 days and 
there are 29 days in the month and he simply used the fingers to explain how we should be illiterate in the matter of moon sighting. Yani we will not use astronomy to establish the new month. We will not use science to establish the new month. We will stick to counting on our fingers 29 days. And then he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam then said, وَالشَّهْرُ And the month, if not 29 days, then it will be. And then he opened all his fingers and then he closed them, then he opened them, then he closed them, then he opened all of them again and showed 30 fingers. So he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam then said, وَهَكَذَا يَعْنِي تَمَامُ ثَلَاثِينَ Yani a complete 30. So he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in this clear hadith which have mentioned the reference of it, of it rigorously authentic. He is clearly telling those people who keep saying let's follow science. The science is telling us that the moon has been born. We already know. Let's set our calendar for the next 20 years uh, based on scientific evidence of the birth of the moon. He sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, we don't need to answer that because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam himself answered it. 1400 years ago, more than that. He said, Inna ummatun ummiyas. We are uh, an illiterate nation. La naktub wa la nahsub. Wa la nahsub. We do not write and neither do we do hisab. We don't calculate and we don't write figures and, and, and use science. Ashahru hakada wa hakada. The month is like this and like this. Yani 29 days. Wa aqad al ibhama fit thalathati in which he uh, folded his uh, one of his thumbs. Then he said, وَالشَّهْرُ هَكَذَا وَهَكَذَا And the month is either 30 days. So the month is simple. Islam is a very simple religion. In the verse of the Qur'an that I mentioned uh, at the beginning in the khutbah, I said, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ In this very verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends ease for you, not difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't require you to go through difficulty in order to establish the new month and to determine your timings for your uh, fasts and for hajj and the other things that require the, the timing based on the sighting of the moon. It is a simple religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has simply said to us, man shahida minkum shahar Whoever receives testimony, who, has, uh, who is a shahid and has, has seen the... the month the, the new moon for the month of Ramadan then he shall fast if you see it you go out after 29 days of the month of Sha'ban have passed just go out after Maghrib Salah have a look at the uh, horizon where the sun has set see if you sight the moon if it's there if it's visible then you know that we have to return to the masjid to perform Taraweeh Salah later because the moon has been sighted and if you don't see it then it's fine you go home and you spend another day of Sha'ban and you will fast the day after that and the, ne the, the next day you will perform your Taraweeh Salah. It's as simple as that. There is no need for a mobile phone network or a telephone line, landline. There is no need to make a, a telephone call to a certain individual. There is no need to connect wires and Bluetooth and all these different types of uh, technologies. There's no need to, to put it on loudspeaker for other people to listen. All these difficulties that you have to go through and pay for, pay the bills of these uh, uh, landlines and, and mobile phones for these international calls and things like that. None of these have been prescribed upon you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is a simple religion. It's easy. We, we need to stop making things difficult in Islam. It is, it is simple as that. The Sahaba Ikiram practiced this throughout their lives. Sayyida Ummul Fadl radiallahu anha, she sent one of her khadims to Sham to Sayyidina Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala uh, uh, governance, in his governance. And he returned. And when he returned, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and asked him that when did, uh, when did you lot start the month of uh, Ramadan? So he said that Yawm al Jum'ah, on the day of Friday. So he said, Sayyidina Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala, and he announced it on Friday that uh, Ramadan began, we started fasting. And uh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas said, did you see it? He said, I saw it as well. I saw the moon myself. So then he said that we saw it on Saturday, so we, we fast on Saturday. So then he then replied, this is Sayyidina Quraib radiallahu and he is the khadim of Sayyidina Sayyida Umm al-Fadl. So he said that, is it not enough for you? That Sayyidina Amir Mu'awiyah, uh, he received testimony and he announced it and I saw it myself. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, is it not enough for you? He said, no, it, I'm not saying that it's not enough. 
He says, Hakaza, this is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us. We are in our city, we are in Medina Munawwara, we go out and we sight the moon. If we see it, we start the new month. If we don't, it's fine. You know, it's not the end of the world. We have another day of the previous month, of, of the current month, and then we start the next month after that. Someone else in another city may have started a day before you because they saw it. That is what the Prophet Muhammad wasallam taught us. And unity is in following the same Sharia and agreeing to have that difference that for you, uh, you saw the moon on that day, so for you, that is the day of the first of Ramadan, or that was the day of Eid. We saw it on this day, so this was the day of Eid for us. And to accept that diversity amongst us around the world is unity. But to argue and say that you were wrong, uh, we saw it, we saw the moon, you should have done it on this day. The answer is no. You saw it, for it so it was fine for you, but for us, we didn't see it. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in another hadith which, which refutes this claim that the moon was born and people in uh, so and so country saw it, why did you not see it? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said that the day of Eid is the day that the people celebrate the day of Eid. That is the day of Eid. Yani not when Africa or Morocco or India or Pakistan or Saudi when they celebrate. It's when your country, when your city sighted the moon and then they celebrated it, that is the day of Eid. Regardless of other people in other cities and countries having sighted it a day before. He said, don't worry about their sighting. The day of Eid is when the people celebrate the day of Eid. And that doesn't mean they, that they can celebrate Eid in Muharram. They can do uh, first of Muharram, we can have Eid al-Fitr, and second of Muharram, we'll celebrate Eid al-Adha as well. Two Eids together. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean that the people can celebrate it whenever they want, and that will be Eid. It means that when people follow my hukum and celebrate Eid, that is the day of Eid. Regardless of people saying, oh, the moon was so thick, it was two days old, or it, it, it's uh, three days old it would be now. These, these type of statements is what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was refuting by saying the day of Eid is when the people celebrate the day of, day of Eid based on my hukum of sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi. Fast when you see it and break your fast when you see it. Yani do celebrate Eid when you see it. So this is the simple concept in Islam and uh, <coughs> that is how the moon is cited by the Muslims uh, in the uh, Ummah. Now, what happens is once you have sighted the moon, the system is, is that when the Sahaba Ikram, when they saw the moon, and I'll mention a hadith for you on this matter, that uh, once uh, in, uh, in Abu Dawud Sharif, in Nasai Sharif, and uh, Ibn Majah, Imam Tahavi has also mentioned this, uh, the narration says that Ughmiya alayna, yani the Sahaba Ikram said, the Sahabi who narrates the hadith, he said, Ughmiya alayna hilalu shawwal. He says that one, one uh, day, the moon, the new moon of shawwal, yani that's the moon we're going to be trying to sight on Sunday. So the Ughmiya alayna hilalu shawwal, yani it was hidden from us. Ughmiya alayna hilalu shawwal, the, the crescent of shawwal was hidden from us. He doesn't say that we didn't see it or he doesn't say that it wasn't there. He says it was hidden from us. Yani it was there, but we, we didn't see it. It was cloudy in uh, maybe in Medina Munawwara at that time. So, Ughmiya alayna hilalu shawwal. Fa asbahna suyaman. So we spent the morning in the state of fasting. Yani we awoke in the morning, we fasted in the morning. Faja'a rakabum min akhirin nahari. Then in the day, a group of people came, travelers. Rakbun is a jama, jama kathra, which means a minimum of 10 people. Minimum 10 people, 10 to 99, it, it could be unlimited, uh, the, the number, yani, it can carry on. So, minimum 10 travelers came. فَشَهِدُوا عِنْدَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ وَسَلَّمْ yani They gave information that they sighted the moon, but that was not accepted. These are more than 10. Who are they? These are sahaba kiram these are whose sahaba kiram more than 10 of them. And they have come, but they had to give shahada. فَشَهِدُوا عِنْدَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. They testified. They delivered shahada. 
أَنَّهُمْ رَأَبُوا الْهِلَالَ بِالْعَمْسِ That they saw the moon, the crescent, yesterday. So after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam received that shahada فَأَمَرَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَنْ يُفْتِرُوا Then he ordered them to break their fast and celebrate because it's Eid now. Because now we have received shahada. So what I'm saying to you is that the fuqhai kiram have said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have placed the, the sighting of the new crescent and the changing of the months into the chapter of shahadat, yani into kitabu shahadat, the chapter or the book of testimonies. Yani there are many things in our lives which don't require testimony. Like for example, I keep using the example of someone gave you a gift and Muhammad came to give you a gift and uh, Zaid sent Muhammad, his friend, that go and give this gift to Amr. So when Amr saw Muhammad and Muhammad said that Zaid gave this gift, Amr does not need to say, do you testify that he gave this gift? He doesn't have to. Like that, if someone came and gave you water, that here do wudu with this water or said, this is the sink, do wudu from here, or this is the wudu khana area, do wudu from here. You don't have to ask him that, do you give shahada that uh, that water is pak and it's pure and it's free from impurity? You don't have to because it's not from the chapter of shahadat. These things are not from that. However, there are certain things which are uh, from the chapter of shahadat, testimonies. For example, if someone accuses someone of rape or someone accuses someone of murder, someone accuses someone of thieving, then we require shahada. If the person doesn't confess, if they don't confess their sin, then you are required to provide shahada, testimony, because it's from the chapter of shahadat. Like that, the establishment of the new moon is from the chapter of shahadat. Testimonies are necessary. And the ulama kiram have said that, or the Qur'an has said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, because now that it is in the chapter of shahadat, we must follow the ahkam of the Qur'an regarding shahada. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an has quite clearly uh, mentioned that the shahada that is accepted in the court of Allah subhanahu wa uh, in the court of the religion of Islam is the way adlin, the way adl. Yani they have to be two, uh, two people <coughs> who are adil. And adil, it is important we understand this, that the word the way adl, which has been mentioned in the Quran, uh, the way adl, adl is someone who is pious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَشْهِدُوا ذَوَيْ عَدْلٍ مِّنْكُمْ وَأَقِيمُوا الشَّهَادَةَ لِلَّهِ ذَلِكُمْ يُعْزُوا بِهِ In Surah Talaq, verse number 2. So although uh, this is regarding shahadat, yani any, any matters which, are, which fall into the chapter of shahadat testimonies, they will have to follow this as well. So the way Adlin, two Adil people who are Adil, these are the word Adil means just to be just, but here it refers to someone who is adhe an adherent to the Sharia in his outer and inner. Any people are aware of who this individual is. It's not a strange person who from his outside looks like he is adherent to Islamic law, but we don't know his inside. I mean, we can't ever know the actual inside of someone's heart. We don't. We, we never know. The awliya kiram know what's in the hearts of people. But it's not for everyone to understand what's in the hearts of people. But what we have been taught here, the way adli, the way adli is that the person has to be adil. Yani he has to be known to the people as being pious in his uh, in his private uh, in, in whilst he is in in privacy or he's in a private room and when he is out in the open. His outer appearance has to be clean and according to the Sharia and people have to know him personally to know that his inner is also pious and he's a sincere person. So these are the two types of people. You need two men like that in order to testify that I have seen the moon. This is only when, the, uh, when in the city it is cloudy. So in the city, in your city, you have gone out to see the moon and it's completely cloudy in the city. You can't see it. Because it's cloudy, the uh, Sharia will then accept two men that are just inside and outside adhering to Sharia, accept their testimonies for establishing the new moon. Okay? 
and if it's not two men then it will be one man who is Adil and two women that are Adila and the reason why two women is because uh, women can remind each other because women uh, naturally go through menstruation and what Islam believes is that menstruation can affect that well not, not not only Islam but even uh, the science of today uh, quite clearly uh, even the NHS in the UK on their on their website it on the official website of the government it says there that yes it, it affects the mental health of women when they are on the menstruation so just in case the women are on the menstruation one can remind the other that's why two women are required uh, in, in place of one man. So they all have to be Adil though. They all have to be Adil. So th two women, one man or two Adil men have to testify. Where do they testify? They testify in front of the Qadi of Islam. The Qadi of Islam is he who has been appointed by the Muslim government as the judge, the Qadi. And if there is no Muslim government and there is no Qadi, there is no Darul Islam, then in that case, the people will appoint a substitute of a Qadi and that will be he who is most knowledgeable in fiqh in the city. And he will be a mufti in the city. And if there is no mufti, the alim who is most knowledgeable in fiqh, he will be appointed as the substitute of the Qadi. And people will come to him and they will deliver their testimony to him. And that is how testimony will be uh, delivered. That's the delivering, delivery and the fulfilling of the testimony. In the case that the, the sky is clear in the city, and this is important, we understand this, that when the sky is clear in the city, then the rule in Sharia is that a, a huge group of people must have seen the moon. Not just two men's testimony will not be enough. The sky was clear. Why are we accepting the testimony of just two people? Where's the rest of the people who saw it? The only time we'll accept their testimony is if they have come from outside the city. So maybe it was not visible in our city. It was visible outside the city. They came and testified. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has allowed us one of the ways of, of, of uh, starting the new month, Eid and Ramzan, etc., is by sighting the moon ourselves. And after we've seen it, we go to the, the local Qadi or the, the, the local Mufti or the most knowledgeable in fiqh. And we go and testify to him that I, have, I testify. And even that, the fuqah -e kiram say that it will not be accepted merely if the person, it says, in Durr Mukhtar ke la law shahidu bi ru'yati ghayrihim. Even if they testified to the sighting of another individual it will not be accepted from them because that is a hikaya if he testifies that if someone says that i testify that uh, shakir hussein saw the moon in so and so place that is just a hikaya that's not a testimony because shahada means that you have seen it yourself you testify yourself so the test the testification has to be of your own Citing. The only way you can accept testimony from another person citing is if he has given you the authority to deliver his testimony on his behalf and you testify not to his citing but you testify to his giving of authority to you. So you would say I testify that so and so gave me the authority to deliver his testimony on behalf of him that he testified that he saw the moon in such and such a place that is called shahada ala shahada and this is what happens generally when we don't see the moon in one city and people go to another city and they find people that have seen the moon and they take their shahada and bring it to the to their own city it is not necessary it is not necessary it is a taklif it is a hardship and a struggle and a uh, uh, a difficulty that Allah has not prescribed upon us but has allowed us so it's not necessary upon us okay Allah has not necessitated upon us but has allowed us to do that because as I said in the beginning Islam is simple you go out you see the moon you start the new month if you don't you finish 30 days of that month so once you've seen the moon you come to the court of the Qadi in the city or the the person who is the substitute of the Qadi and you testify to him he may accept your testimony Okay, remember that it is not necessary for him to accept the testimony. It's up to him when he feels satisfied um, after receiving 10 testimonies, he feels I'm still not satisfied. There were hundreds of people 
I saw hundreds of people there sight, going to sight the moon. Why have only 10 people come? He may not be satisfied. He might want more. He may see that nobody goes out to see the moon in this city. People have stopped following the Sharia and they are now following science. And they keep going around saying, oh, Islam should advance and we should uh, move forward with the times. Uh, we don't need to go out and sight the moon. We have knowledge of the moon uh, being born, etc. They don't bother going out to sight the moon. So in that case, the Qadi might be satisfied with a few people, less than 10, might be satisfied with seven, six, five people. That, that's enough because not all people go to sight the moon in the city. So this is enough to satisfy me that the new moon, they have certainly seen the new moon. Okay, so that is Shahada. Merely giving Khabar in front of the Qadi and giving information when you come in front of the Qadi and say that, uh, oh, so-and-so, Sheikh, so-and-so, Qadi, so-and-so, uh, my name is this and this. Uh, I, Bismillah rahman rahim I saw the moon uh, 10 minutes ago in this place I, with my own eyes. That's not enough. Because that is, again, the Fuqha Kiram say it is merely a Hikaya. Hikaya, and it's just telling tales. The only way it will be accepted is if he uses ashhadu, I bear witness, I give shahada, I testify. He has to use this terminology in order for his shahada or information to be regarded as valid in sharia. Okay, so that's shahada. And uh, if someone has received this shahada, uh, if the Qadi has received the Shahada, once the Qadi of the city has received the Shahada, then for the rest, for that city in which this Shahada has been delivered, for that city, the A'lan of the Qadi is enough. Which is, A'lan means announcement. The announcement of the Qadi is enough. And what is an announcement of the Qadi? The announcement of the Qadi is when the Qadi says that after receiving so-and-so testimonies, uh, that, are, that were sufficient according to Sharia today of the sighting of the new moon for the, for the month of Eid, for example, for Shawwal. I have announced or I announce that uh, Eid is tomorrow and the first of Shawwal is tomorrow. The new moon has been proven and established. That is an announcement of the Qadi. Now that announcement, which happens in one city after he has received testimonies, is enough for the whole city uh, which can be spread through khabar, mere information. Yani we don't need to go door to door to everybody's house that uh, Haji Imran Saab, uh, I give shahada that the moon has been sighted. Knock on the next person's door, Haji Irshad Saab, I give shahada that the moon has been sighted. We don't have to do that to the whole city. We don't have to go around. The, the city requires shahada in front of the Qadi. Once the Qadi has received the shahada, his announcement is enough and that announcement can be valid from the radio it can be announced by writing on the internet through social media just for that one city and its outskirts <coughs> so those towns and uh, villages in the outskirts that follow that city or come under that city the suburbs they will that will be enough for them as well okay so that's an ilan of the qadi it is a completely different chapter in fiqh Babu uh, Ilan al Hudud, the, the boundaries of the Ilan of the Qadi. How far can the Ilan reach? Because nowadays, uh, a, few, a, years, a couple of years ago, I think there was a scholar who was saying that once the, the uh, Qadi of so and so country has announced, then he has announced he is the Qadi al Qudat, he is the Qadi of the whole world, and it's enough for the rest of the world, his announcement. There are Hudud for the Ilan, for the announcement. And the Hudud or his city and the outskirts. That's what the Hanafi Fuqhai Kiram have quite clearly written. Sayyiduna Imam Abu Yusuf was the Qadi al Qudat of Iraq, of uh, Iraq when he was appointed the student of Imam Azam Abu Hanifa, radiallahu ta'ala. And his announcement was only valid for his city. And if he wanted his announcement to be, uh, to be uh, legislated throughout the whole of his uh, governed land, then he had to send two Adil witnesses who would there testify to his law that he has announced. And then they would go to the next city and they would testify there that we testify that this uh, is the hukum that Qa Imam Qadi Abu Yusuf has announced and he has ordered for you to legislate this in your city as well. Like that, he would send them out 
to all the places. Now, people say that uh, technology is so advanced now, so we should now uh, accept testimony over the phone. Until today, I have not met an alim of the deen who have said testimony, shahada over the phone can be accepted. There is a fatwa regarding khabr mustafid can be accepted over the phone, but not shahada, not shahada. Shahada is uh, in Fatawa Tatar Khania, if I remember correctly, in, in the very beginning of the chapter, it says that the delivery of the Shahada requires, or for Shahada, the person has to be bi jasadihi wa ruhihi, with his body and his ruh, he has to be present. Okay, so a wali of Allah, for example, with his ruh travels to another place and gives Shahada, it's not enough. He has to be present with his body and his ruh. Okay, so if you are present with your body and your ruh, then you can give shahada in that manner. Does that make sense? Okay, so you have to be present in front of the qadi. Up to the extent the fuqhai kiram have said that if he is standing behind a wall, he is standing behind a wall and the wall is a hindrance uh, for the qadi to see him and the people present in the courtroom to see the witness, then that shahada will be rejected. It won't be accepted. A woman with a niqab, face covering, yeah, until she does not uncover her face and show who she is, even that is a barrier and a hindrance from the acceptance of shahada. So shahada cannot be accepted behind walls and veils uh, up to the extent that if, if uh, hundreds of thousands of people give shahada from behind a wall, it's not accepted. They have to break that wall down and come in front, show their faces and then testify. That, that is what the fuqhai kiram have already written. Okay, regarding shahada, this is regarding testimonies. Okay, I'm not talking about mere information. There's no harm in you ringing someone and saying that uh, I'm doing this today or it rained here today. Yes, you can accept it rained there. You can say that uh, I saw the moon. Yes, you must have seen the moon there. Yes, in Africa the moon was sighted. No problem. We accept that information. But is that sufficient for me to establish the new moon for my city in Preston? No, it's not. Because the Prophet Muhammad did not accept that. He has already rejected that. I've already mentioned the hadith uh, of the Messenger of Allah on that. So it's important that we understand this. That the, the telephone call is... The, the person is not present there with his body and his ruh in front of the qadi and in front of the people there. Okay? So... That, that's one of the reasons. Uh, another reason you can understand is, can you, uh, you can, people say that, oh, the West has moved so forward. This is, we are here in England. This is probably uh, as high as the technology can get in the world. Okay, some people may argue that the, the technology in China is far ahead. But, but the West likes to believe that England is, is the leading country like the USA in technology. When, the, when COVID happened, the pandemic and uh, people were in lockdowns, the courts room were closed. They then decided that why don't we do online courtrooms? Yeah, we will have all read about that on the internet. The UK completely didn't accept testimonies over the phone. Okay, they didn't accept that in the UK. In the court of law, can you imagine that someone uh, is being uh, punished for murder, manslaughter, uh, for any other crime, rape, and the, the, the witness doesn't come in the courtroom. He phones from Morocco and says, yeah, I, I saw him raping her. I, I saw the actual crime, I saw him. The judge is not going to accept. He won't even uh, entertain such a phone call of an individual over the phone. Um, if, if the person had directly contacted the, the, uh, the, the Justice Department and he uh, identified himself as a witness, then his testimony will still not be accepted. He will be asked that the court case is going on in London or in Liverpool or in Preston. You will have to go and attend court. We will give you a time when your witness statement will be required. He will have to come and attend himself. There are only certain exceptions in the UK whereby a, a testimony will be accepted without the presence of that person. And that will be that that person will have to go and present themselves in front of a qadi in another city, in another courtroom. They will have to be present and they will have to testify in front of that individual and that testimony will be passed over to the relevant courtroom. This is only accepted in certain circumstances where the witness is vulnerable from being present in that courtroom. Their identity needs to be hidden. For example, it's a small child. It's maybe a eight, nine-year-old small girl or boy. 
they are vulnerable and for them to be present in the courtroom or see that environment the government may not accept that so for that for that type of an issue they will allow that or someone's life is at threat if they attend and it's a genuine threat and it's been researched and investigated and the government has approved that okay or the justice department has approved that okay in that case we'll accept it. otherwise it is not accepted at all so the uk government that people keep saying that the, they are so advanced in technology even they don't accept testimonies over the phone they don't accept them now in covid they trialed it they trialed it and those of you who have read the news they will know what happened in them trials suddenly in the courtroom there were there was pornography or there was a, a school teacher teaching his class appearing in the courtroom because of uh, conflicting networks and uh, due to disturbance in in the line do you follow what i'm saying so the government completely rejected it they said we've trialed it it doesn't work we've tried putting security to, there to make sure that we we are not interfered but it kept happening it kept happening in america it kept happening in the uk in these trials so they've completely rejected it otherwise they were planning on going on with online courtrooms and testimonies they only will allow that now in exceptional circumstances for regular court cases it's not accepted so here in uh, in islam the the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has already told us and already prescribed a law for us okay we all understand that now what i want to uh, share with you also is that the fuqaha e kiram have said that the reason why the the person testifying from behind a veil or the person testifying from behind a wall his testimony or their testimony will not be accepted is because they said a sawt the voice of an individual yashbahu sawt it resembles the voice of others yani one individual's voice can imitate the voice of another person and therefore it's not acceptable okay the sharia has uh, has sieved yani they have uh, separated or removed any doubtful elements that could be uh, interfering into the qada in the chapter of qada and they said that the voice of an individual resembles the voice of another individual and therefore merely by voice testimony cannot be accepted okay and generally these telephone calls they are accepted through voice okay and like that he the fuqaha kiram have said that uh, the the writing the writing uh, al khatto yashbahu al khat the writing of one individual resembles the writing of another therefore even a written fax or an email or a uh, uh, whatever official uh, document you can get from the moroccan uh, uh, moroccan officials regarding the citing it it says that the the, the fuqaha e kiram have unanimously said al khatto yashbahu al khat the writing of one resembles the writing of another therefore writing is not mu'tabar is not considered an acceptable in this chapter as well in the chapter of shahadat in the chapters of in the chapter of testimonies do we understand that there's only one exception made by the fuqaha e kiram which uh, is that uh, kitabul qadi ila al qadi which is the writing of one qadi to another qadi with the condition that the qadi who has written that statement he has two men that are adil testify and observe and see his writing that he has written this hukum they know the content of it he gives it to them they carry it with them to the qadi of another city or another country and they deliver shahada that we testify that this document has been written by so and so a qadi and then they give it to him then it may be it will be accepted and even then it's up to the the qadi to accept that or not accept it do we understand how important it is now before i finish and come to some of the questions that uh, some people have asked uh, i'll i'll mention that the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed certain things for us certain things he has not prescribed and he's left it to us to decide how we do them okay like namaz allah has prescribed you have to pray your namaz in a specific manner Allah has prescribed it for you. If someone thinks that you know what, I'm going to change the ruku, I'm going to change the ruku to a squatting position. You can't do that. Why can you not do that? And you can say that oh because exercise has advanced 
and we've been told that squatting is very beneficial for the body so we're going to change the ruku to squatting now we should move forward with the times you can't do that because Allah has prescribed the way of namaz the Prophet ﷺ has prescribed it so we can't change certain things like that the sighting of the moon and establishing the new moon it's it's not something that Allah and the Prophet ﷺ has left in in our discretion for us to choose how to do it he has prescribed it for us okay he has prescribed it for us and therefore we have to follow that prescription and we can't go with the times in those things there are certain things we can you know we when we do lectures we use microphones and we use speakers we use uh, online like we are now we're, we're online we're using the uh, laptop and all these uh, applications and mixler whatever else we, we we use technology where Allah has left it in our discretion to choose how we do things but when there is a prescription from Allah we have to follow that prescription if you don't it's going to be invalid just like a doctor prescribes you a medicine and you don't follow his prescription you won't get the cure and then you complain I'm not better why are you not better because the doctor told you to follow the prescription so if you want to follow and you want your namaz and fasting and everything to be valid you have to follow the prescription and the prescription is is that you go out and sight the moon if you sight it you start the next month celebrate Eid. if you don't sight it finish 30 days however if someone comes from another country from another city the person comes himself with his body and his ruh and <coughs> he testifies that i have seen it i've come from morocco i've just landed from the flight I have seen the new moon, I testify. He comes himself, present body and soul. Then we will accept it and we'll change the new. We will change the month. We'll celebrate it the next day. Okay, because in the Hanafi madhab, there is one moon for the whole world. The, the sighting of the, the east is valid for the sighting of the west. The sighting of the west is valid, valid for the sighting of the east. However, all the ulama unanimously agree that there is a prescription given by Allah and the Prophet ﷺ in how we will accept the sighting of the West in the East and how sighting of the we uh, East in the West. How will we accept it? The, it is called the turuq e mujiba So there has to be a tariq, tariqa mujiba for you to accept it. What is that tariqa mujiba The phone call? No. The uh, fax? No. The announcement on TV or radio? No. The person has to travel from there, come to your city and announce or testify that I testify, I saw the moon, or uh, I testify that so and so uh, gave me authority that he testified that he saw the moon, and so and so. So these manners, there are there's a prescription. Now you can't just pick up the phone and accept it. Like even for the knowledge of sunset, we know that once you've received the knowledge of sunset, you can break your fast. Okay. So if you have the knowledge of sunset because you've got to watch and you know that sunset is at this time and you are certain that that calculation is correct because remember I told you that in the sun in the beginning those of you who were here I mentioned the difference between the timings of namaz and the the starting of the new month based on the new moon so for for namaz for the moon for the sun it's about the knowledge of the sunset knowledge of the sunset not the sighting of it so we don't have to see it as long as you've got the knowledge that it's set it's enough Okay, so if you've not got the knowledge and two people have come from, uh, they've come from Blackburn, just from outside Preston, they've come here and they've said the moon, the sun has set. How do you know? I saw the sun has set. That gives you enough knowledge that the sun has set. Do we understand that? And you can break your fast like that. Why? Because they followed the tariqa mujiba. They followed the necessary means of delivering that information and granting you knowledge. That's acceptable in Sharia. So if two people come from black men and they come and say to you that the sun has said we saw it and you look at the time and it makes sense and it gives you that satisfaction, you can break your fast on that. Do we understand that? Now if someone from London calls you and on the phone he says there's a hundred of us sitting here, here, one by one. This is so and so, the son of so and so, son and so, son and so, son of, this is so and so. We all testify. The sun has set. And for those of you who don't know, 20 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, sometimes 13 minutes earlier, the sun sets for London. Can you break your fast here? Why not? Technology is so advanced now. We are, you know, it's absolute certain. I know the guy, he's my brother. He lives in London. I know him, his voice, I recognize it. 
it's 100% him. The sun has set. Call from Morocco. The sun set how long ago? A few hours before. Can we break our fast? From Africa. They are telling you that the sun has set. He's swearing by Allah. This is uh, Hazrat Allama Mufti Aftab Qasim Sam. We know him personally. He is telling me over the phone that uh, Zahid Bhai, Suraj Dub Chuka hai. The sun has set. Ab iftari kar le. I can't do my iftari. Why? Because he has not followed the tariqa mujiba. Yes, if he came and he testified or he came and informed me that the sun set in Africa at so and so a time, then that's a different matter. Do we understand what I'm, what I'm getting at? Like that, the moon will generally be sighted, like the sun will set earlier for Morocco or for South Africa or for other countries in the east, like that the moon will be visible there generally most of the months throughout the year, earlier there, a day before there. Naturally, we should be doing a day, Eid a day after India and Pakistan. It's natural. And it's shocking how sometimes we are, our people here in the West are doing Eid one day before India and Pakistan. How is that possible? You're living in the West. How have you received that testimony? It's like breaking your fast four hours before because you received a phone call from Pakistan or India saying that the sun has set. Iftari time has happened. You are doing iftari, yani celebrating Eid and ending the month of Ramadan. Yes, if someone came from South Africa, they traveled and then they gave shahada that we testify that the, the moon has been, we sighted the moon in South Africa, or we sighted the moon in Morocco, or we were there and the Qadi of the city of Faiz, he uh, received testimony and he announced that the moon, and he announced uh, his uh, statement that the moon is established, the new month has started. If they come and testify that from Morocco, then that will be acceptable, because that is a tariqa mujiba. And that's now acceptable in, in Islamic law. So do we all understand that? Okay, so by now, I, I hope that we will have uh, understood a overall understanding of how the moon sighting uh, works in Islamic law. It is a very simple concept once you understand it. It's, it's simple. You go out, sight the moon. If you don't see it, you finish 30 days of that month. That's all it is. Yes, if some people turn up and they say that, yes, we testify in front of the Qadi, then the Qadi may announce it. That's as simple as it is. We are not required to send people to other cities. However, you are permitted to. So you may do so. The Qadi may send, he may receive information, okay, news, khabr, not shahada. He may receive khabr that it has been cited in <coughs> Bolton or in the outskirts of, of uh, our city. So yes, he may send a few people that go on, you can go on. Test, go and take testimony from them and bring it back to me. There's no harm in that, although it is not necessary upon us. I'm going to move on to uh, looking at the questions now. And we did say, I did say at the beginning that you require two Adil people minimum for, the, for starting the month of Eid and the rest of the months, beside, besides starting the month of Ramadan, because the starting the month of Ramadan is an exception proven by Hadith, that merely the information of a non fasik individual will be accepted. One, just the, the one. He doesn't even have to say Shahada. Just information. But even that, he has to come and he has to present himself with body and soul in front of whom he's given that information to. So that, that is the requirement to Adil. And just to make it clear that people who are not adherent to the Sharia in their outer appearance or in their daily doings or uh, the habits that they do, then their testimony will not be accepted. For So if, if the Qadi is sending an individual or two people to another city to get testimony, he has to make sure they are Adil people. <coughs> they are thoroughly known by the people and the people know that this is a pious person inside and outside. Then yes, he should send them type of people. But he should not send people who are openly committing sin or they are not adherent and they're not pious, adherent to the Sharia. I'm going to move on to the questions now. Uh, so the first question I have here is we follow scientific methods and get the direction of Qibla. We determine the times of five times prayers using scientific methods. We also get the moon sighting possibility report from the meteorolog meteorological uh, department. If it doesn't tally the scientific criteria, we don't even accept the shahadat. Why don't we accept the gawahi over the phone? So I believe I've already answered this question. <coughs> okay, I've already answered this question. Uh, the Messenger of Allah has uh, separated the matter of 
the establishment of the new moon by uh, necessitating ru'ya. Yani it's based on the sighting. Sumu li ru'yatihi. Fast when you see it, not when you know that it's born. The new moon has been born. Then do, he, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, didn't say when the new moon is born, start the new month. He said when you see it. So it's ru'ya. The ulama kiram say that ru'ya sometimes comes in the meaning of knowledge. But here it is necessarily in the meaning of actual sighting because when, and, and this is more technical for those people who have the knowledge of Arabic grammar, there are certain verbs known as afale qulub. And afale qulub are those uh, verbs that require more than one object in the verb. And the only way the word ru'ya can come in the meaning of knowledge is when it is a fairly qalb. And it has to have more than one maf'ul. And in all the hadith regarding the sighting of the moon, there's only one maf'ul. There's only one object for the verb. And that, did, that uh, confirms that in the chapter of moon sighting, ru'ya means sighting, not knowledge. Because some people interpret ru'ya as knowledge, not in this case. Unfortunately, the uh, Arabic grammar does not accept what you're saying. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the most knowledgeable in Arabic uh, than any other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he knew what he was saying without doubt. He's not missed an object on purpose. And you uh, saying that we will make one up and say the Prophet وسلم, didn't mention it, but it's there. That's not the case. The, the object not mentioned means that ru'ya means to cite anyhow. So it has to be cited and the prophet sallallahu also said that inna ummatun ummiyatun uh, we are an illiterate nation regarding or in the chapter of moon sighting yani la naktubu wa la nahsubu he sallallahu alaihi said we don't write we don't do hisab yani we don't use science and astronomy and calculations where we will be illiterate in what matter in the matter of the new months yani moon sighting ashar so if he has clearly said that to you that we will not look at literacy for moon sighting, then what that means is, yes, we can use assistance from it. As the questioner has said that uh, we uh, also get the moon sighting possibility report. So we can use assistance, but we can't determine the new moon by it. Okay, because the Prophet ﷺ has already answered that. And he said, فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ If it has been hidden from you, then finish 30 days, which means the birth is there, it's born but the clouds have hidden the moon from you, then the Prophet ﷺ said the hukum is finished 30 days. Why? Because Allah has not burdened you uh, to go and, go and purchase technology and machines which can uh, have so much light and extreme light that can uh, allow your sight to tear through the clouds and see the, the moon. Allah has not burdened you with that. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not ordered you to that. The Prophet ﷺ said if it's been hidden, the moon is there but it's been hidden by pollution or artificial lighting in your city or clouds then finish 30 days you don't have to go out and get a, hire a helicopter and go through the clouds and try and find it you don't have to do that just finish 30 days it's simple no harm the the next question and regarding gawahi over the phone as i've mentioned shahada over the phone even the west doesn't accept it even the 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 ones who are more who claim to be the most advanced in technology, even they don't accept testimony over the phone. How would Islam uh, stoop to such a low level that they would start accepting uh, shahada over the phone? Islam is more important and their shahada and testimonies are, are of more uh, due care and diligence. The next question says, even if our well-known and trustworthy people say over the phone that they have taken shahada from two rightful people and he is satisfied with the shahada with regard to the moon sighting, we still, still don't accept it as enough to declare the festival. Is this way correct? If it is correct, what is the reason for this strictness with this regard? As I've mentioned, it's not strictness. This is ease. This is not strictness. Uh, Huzur Muhaddis Kabir was once in uh, the state of Ihram and uh, uh, he was, it, it was hot and after tawaf, someone quickly came with a glass of rose water for Huzur Muhaddis Kabir. It had gulab petals of uh, rose in there and uh, he came and he gave it to Huzur Muhaddis Kabir and Huzur Muhaddis Kabir in the state of Ihram you should not be eating or drinking something that has fragrance. 
especially when it's raw, it's not been cooked. So he uh, said no to him. And he said, I want uh, sada pani lao, yani just plain water. So he drank the plain water. So the person said, Huzur, why are you being so strict for? Islam is not that difficult. And you know, adinu sahlun, yusrun, the religion is easy. So Huzur Muhaddi Sekabi looked at him. And he said, it is so easy to just get some plain water and just drink it. That's how easy Islam is. It's you who's made it difficult to go to a, a, a plant which has thorns in it, protect yourself from being poked by a thorn and start bleeding, carefully take the rose out, then separate the uh, petals and try and crush them so that their smell and fragrance and taste can uh, enter the water and then mix it and then come and give it to me. Am I following ease or you? And are you being strict and causing difficulty or am I causing the difficulty? And like that, he said that, you know, when people use the microphone in the, in the namaz and even this uh, telephone called shahada, he said that we are simply saying, you come to the masjid, the imam says, Allah Akbar, start the namaz. There's no need to have an electric, electric company providing you electricity, paying electric bills, having all the wiring done, and then connecting, buying a microphone, connecting it, a speaker, connecting that. All of this is strictness and difficulty and hardship. Islam is a simple religion. Just come, start your namaz, pray your namaz and go. You don't have to worry about all this speaker volume and echo and sound and suddenly it starts screaming. This, this, the, the speaker sometimes on its own accord starts singing and it starts screaming at times when namaz is happening. And uh, it's, it's just wrong sometimes. So we use all of this where Allah has not prescribed a specific way. When Allah has prescribed a specific way, then we don't use technology there unless it adheres to that specific prescription. So like that, Huzur Mahdi Sekabi says, we, we're not using strictness, you are using strictness. I have, I have witnessed myself where someone is accepting testimony over the phone. Okay, first of all, testimony, shahada, they were referring it to as khabar. We can't accept shahada, it's khabar over the phone. The man doesn't speak Arabic. He's learned Arabic grammar, but he understands a bit of Arabic, he reads books. In Arabic and but he's never spoke experience speaking dialogue with Arabs he's on the phone phoning this number in Morocco and he's uh, someone answers the phone and he says assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and then he he really carefully says ana min inkal tara wa as'aluka atarawna al hilala am la Okay, so this is really pure Arabic he's using that. Did you lot see the moon or not? And he says, Mara'a, Mara'a. Mara'a, Mara'a. And then he puts the phone down. He said, he said Ra'a, Ra'a means he saw, he saw. And not knowing that Mara'a means he said Ma before it and Ma means he did not see. We've not seen it, we've not seen it. Mara'ina, Mara'ina. And the way he was saying the Ma, and joining it with the Ra'a, it, he, it wasn't clear. Unless someone was familiar with the Moroccan dialogue, he wouldn't understand that. So based on that, he said Ra'a means he saw it. So then they announced Eid. And this is in Preston. Okay, this is a local Maulana here. So they've announced Eid. And then it got published from Morocco that they had not cite, cited it. And it was, it was news all around Preston that, oh... Uh, Morocco announced it wasn't cited and how are we <laughs> celebrating Eid on this day so all of this is strictness why do we have to follow this country or that country and telephone this individual or that individual in order to attain shahada or khabar over the phone or khabre mustafid why do we have to do all of that and connect all these wires and get a network and pay a bill a phone bill etc make sure the line is clear all of this is unnecessary it's not necessary. Islam is a simple religion. We follow the ease and unfortunately people are now making things difficult in Islam. So question number three says, for the last 1400 years, hasn't it ever happened that someone had sighted the moon somewhere and by means of some communication, another location has started the fasting or declared for the Eid with this communication? Okay, so number three, yes, of course, I mentioned that there are turuq e mujiba, there are necessary means which have been prescribed by Allah and the Prophet Muhammad which have been deduced by the fuqha kiram of how 
we can establish the sighting of another country or another city for another country and another city. Okay, there is one is Shahada, they come and deliver the testimony from another place, they come themselves and deliver that testimony. Another way is that a huge group of, or huge groups, Jama'atun Kathira, in uh, Fatawa Alamgiri and other books of Fiqh, it says Jama'at Kathira, yani big groups. So not just one group, more than two groups of, yani a lot of groups with a lot of people in each group, they all come from another city or a country and they all together give information. Yani they don't have to give shahada, they can give information. Because there's so many of them, it's impossible for all of them to be lying. If the Qadi feels that these are so many people who have come from black men, the neighboring city or town, and they are all saying the same thing that the moon, we have sighted the moon in black men. And the Qadi is satisfied that this many people and all these people cannot be lying, then that will be acceptable. That's Khabr Mustafid. And this is what some scholars now say we can accept over the phone. Khabr Mustafid. What is Khabr Mustafid? When a group when uh, groups of many people come from another place and they all together uh, give information that they have sighted the moon and it satisfies the Qadi. He feels that these people from the outer appearance, they look, uh, they look adherence to the Sharia or he knows certain ones, of the, ones from amongst them and he can accept that all of these, it's impossible for all of them to be lying. So such huge groups of people when they come and they satisfy the Qadi, then it can be accepted without Shahada. And this is what some people have now assumed that is acceptable over the phone. So they say that we've accepted 11 uh, people over the phone, minimum amount. They say minimum, it has to be between 9 and 12. So if we receive 9 and 12 people from Morocco saying that I sighted the moon, I sighted the moon, I sighted the moon, then it's acceptable. The, the problem with that is, is that I studied the, the way the Moroccans have their moon sighted. And before I mention how they do, I'll quickly mention that some of the months I've been following these announcements in England, of khabr mustafid which is a minimum of nine people saying that they've sighted the moon over the phone, mere information, not shahada. The, the problem with that is, is that in Morocco, only two people sighted the moon. The official Moroccan government only found two witnesses on one of the months. How on earth did this Mufti Saab or Maulana Saab in the UK find 11? Sitting here over the telephone, it just doesn't make sense. And another thing is, is that in Morocco, the announcement of Morocco is not based on Shahada. It is not based on Shahada. They have more than 200 uh, moon sighting points. It's on the official government website. It's, it's, there. it's in Arabic, I've read it. And it mentions that they will sight the moon anywhere it has been seen. They will fill a form in and fax it to the central court, uh, where the judge will receive the fax and based on that, he will announce the moon the next month has started. No shahada. Koi shahada ne in Morocco. So how can you accept shahada or khabr mustafid from a place that doesn't even follow the rules of shahada? So to me it doesn't make sense how people follow, follow these countries. So the only way we can follow the, the, the Moroccan country is if two adil people, for example two adil minimum amount, they have sat in a flight after sighting the moon or they sighted it from the flight Okay, they sight it from the flight is fine as well. They've seen the moon and then they've arrived in the UK. Let's say, for example, Manchester Airport and they've come here to the center and in front of us, they testify. We just come from Morocco. Uh, three hours ago, we sighted the moon with our own eyes. We testify, we give shahada and this is who we are. Then we may accept that. Does that make sense? Because they have now followed a tariqa mujiba. So yes, by means of tariqa mujiba they have and there will have been many many places where they will have followed the moon sighting of another country or another place because the sharia has allowed it the last question i have here is when we say that imam shafi rahmatullahi alayhi is on haq then there are fatawa of followers of imam shafi that say that shahada may be taken over the phone because in their mazhab it is permissible then they then why not we follow Shafi Maslak with this regard in Sri Lanka given the, that the majority in Sri Lanka are followers of Imam Shafi because the moon sighting disputes there comes disunity among the Muslims. So um, um, 
<coughs> this is a matter from Sri Lanka, so I would advise that you speak to the uh, ulama there in Sri Lanka of ours. Speak to them, they will advise you better because I don't know what the fatwa of the Shafi scholars there is. Um, but what I will say is that the rule of shahada and delivery of shahada and being present in the courtroom and delivering the shahada is in all four madhabs because it's in the Quran, it's in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad It's what all, the, all four of the madhahib follow. And uh, <coughs> uh, if you are a Hanafi, then you have to follow the Hanafi fiqh. You can't pick and choose because Islam forbids us from following the, the desires and the whims. We have to follow one Imam and we have to adhere to that Imam. Um, so if there are scholars of the Shafi madhab uh, ordering something like that, then that is uh, that is up to them what they teach and what they give fatwa of. Um, however, uh, in terms of shahada, shahada cannot be accepted over the telephone and uh, maybe they accept khabr over the telephone, I have no idea. Um, I cannot comment on the Shafi Madhab. But as for us, we are Hanafis, we follow the Hanafi. In fact, the Shafi Madhab is far more strict than the Hanafi Madhab. In, in the matters of moon sighting. They don't even accept the shahada of someone who eats in the marketplace. Okay, so for example, if you're in the marketplace or you've, you've gone and sat at a restaurant and eaten outside your home or taken food from a takeaway and you've sat there and eaten, Imam Shafi doesn't even accept their testimony because it's against muru'a. Muru'a means it's a standard. Muslims should, you know, like the, 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 the royal family we have in the UK, you won't see the queen driving by at a, at a local restaurant or taking a, uh, where, where do they eat, a McDonald's drive through You won't see the queen going there because it's against her status. It's muru'a. It's the manners that she has to adhere to due to her royal status. Like that, Imam Shafi, and it's, it's muru'a in the Hanafi madhab as well, that you don't uh, sit and eat in the marketplaces. You come home and eat or you come and sit in a, in a place where... Uh, it's suitable to eat. So Imam Shafi doesn't even accept that. In the Hanafi Madhab, if someone has eaten in the marketplaces, it, it won't affect his shahada. But here, we, Imam Shafi, he doesn't even accept that. So in, in terms of moon sighting, Imam Shafi is far more strict. So I'm not sure where uh, this question or where the knowledge in this question has come from. Maybe, as I said, that speak to the ulama uh, of uh, the Hanafi ulama in uh, the uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, if you are a Hanafi and if you are a Shafi then you are obliged to follow the Shafi ulama you find the one who is most knowledgeable in fiqh um, as for when the ulama are accepting something that is invalid or incorrect in sharia then the, the simple principle in Islamic law which is from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi sallam is la ta'ata li makhluqin fi ma'siyat al-khaliq la ta'ata li makhluqin there is no ta'ah, there is no obedience of any creation of Allah, any scholar, any parents, mother, father. There is no obedience of anyone fi ma'siyatil khaliq in a matter that you are disobeying, disobeying Allah. And if your mother, you have to be obedient to your mother and father. The Quran has emphasized on it. Do what your mother and father says, make sure you please them. But if your mother and father says to you that don't, uh, don't fast. In the month of Ramadan, it's fault for me to fast. Mother and father are saying, don't fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, religion says, لا طاعت في معصيت الخالق There is no obedience for anyone when, you, when it will cause you to be disobedient to Allah. So you, you will have to disobey your parents, you will have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will have to fast. Like that, the hakim islam we must adhere to the hukum of the hakim islam the khalifatul muslimin the qadi of the of the muslims we must adhere to the qadi the hakim the the prophet ﷺ specifically ordered us that follow the hukum don't disobey the hakim of islam the one who is the ruler upon you you must obey him but that means when he does not his when his command does not directly contradict the command of Allah and the Prophet because لا تعطى في معصية الخالق so if there is a Qadi or Mawlana or Hakim or Khalifa or the government that is announcing or enforcing upon you something that goes against the hukum of Allah and the Prophet Muhammad 
then it is jihad. You will be rewarded with a jihad to ensure that you adhere to the hukum of Allah and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and you disobey the creation of Allah in that matter. So I, uh, so if it's important that we bear that in mind. I, I have no more questions left here from online. So if there is any questions that any of you have, then please ask now. There is no harm in seeing the moon wearing glasses. Okay, you can see the moon through glasses like that. You can see the moon through a window, like your house window, car window. You can use binoculars to sight the moon, even that is acceptable. The only time it will not be acceptable is when there is artificial light interference, like laser interference, which tears through the clouds because that will then be against you seeing it from your eye. Anything that involves another screen or electric in interference where it allows you to go through the clouds and things like that, then that's not being permitted by the ulama kiram. But a mere glass which, which can enlarge in things like the uh, binoculars, then there's no harm in using them to sight the moon. Okay. A lot of people in the UK they agree that um, like local sighting will do is correct. But what they say is uh, just to avoid any issues at home because my parents will say this and that. I'm just gonna do eat with them and I'll make up uh, fast. Like, what's, what's the solution on that? Yeah, so like I said, that it's not permissible for them to do that because it says La Ta'ata fi Masiyatil Khalik. They are obeying the creation of Allah in disobeying Allah, which is completely wrong. It should be the other way around. They should disobey their parents if, if they are uh, ordering you to disobey Allah. But that's one thing. Uh, if they do do that, then yes, they will be sinful and uh, they will have to do one qada fast. Okay, it, 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 uh, to uh, be eating biryani and uh, halwa and soji and all of that when it's still the month of Ramadan and it's an obligatory fast upon you, it's the 30th day of Ramadan, is wrong. Okay. Okay, so if there is no more questions. Okay, so Jazakumullah Khaira, I thank you all for attending and listening. Um, if there is anything else, uh, then you can always contact uh, me. Uh, through our website, the Sunni Way, or through Fazir Raza, you can contact us, or anywhere. You know, we, people know how to reach me, so please, please do uh, send your questions if you do. If I if I've not answered any of your questions that you have sent, then it's most probably because I've unfortunately been occupied with too many things, and uh, I may still be researching the uh, question that you've asked, and I've not uh, found the uh, legal ruling for your question. Uh, so it's either that I'm unfortunately, and I apologize in advance and uh, apologize with a delay to those people who have already sent their questions and have not answered them. I apologize and may Allah forgive me. Um, uh, hopefully we will have a, a larger team that can help in uh, answering questions. We have new muftis now available and hopefully they will support in getting your questions answered, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the work that we do for the religion and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the truth uh, clear and apparent before us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to adhere to that truth and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like that make the faults uh, apparent and clear before us so that we can uh, abstain from it and then may Allah give us the tawfiq to abstain from that faults and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all success in this world and grant us success in the hereafter and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us uh, uh, protection from uh, all evils in this world and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from his uh, punishment save us from his punishment in, in our graves and in the hereafter in the maidan e hashr may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, save us from his anger and from his qahr and from his jabr may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us mercy in, in this great blessed month of Ramadan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give cure to our ill and may Allah uh, give help to those in need 
and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide sustenance to those who, who are uh, in shortage of sustenance and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give uh, highness to those who are feeling low and uh, have, have uh, gone low. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant uh, strength and power to those upon whom, uh, those Muslims upon whom uh, uh, the, the tyrants are committing uh, uh, oppression. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the knowledge of his religion and allow us to adhere to that religion and that sharia. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand that the religion of Islam is simple and easy and protect us from making it hard and causing disunity amongst the people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to adhere to the way of our pious predecessors. Um, that is the way of unity, to, to unite on the way of the pious predecessors. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the bid'at and the innovations that the people uh, uh, create and commit uh, in order to move away from the way of the pious predecessors. Those are the ones who in reality are causing the fitna, who move away from the uh, uh, fatwa of the pious predecessors and, and start a new or, or issue a new fatwa that opposes it. May Allah protect us from that and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to stay in the company of the pious and the rightly guided ulama and may Allah pro protect us from the evil of the ulama and the evil of all of his creation and protect us from the tricks and traps of the shaitan. Ameen bijahi habibika Muhammadin al-Mustafa alihi afdalu salawati wa akmalu taslimat wa bi rahmatika ya arhamar wa rahimin wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khidi khalqihi sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.